Hello there, fifth graders. Welcome to your next math lesson. Go ahead and open up your math notebook to the next available page. And at the top of that page, please write the title of today's lesson, which is Multiply Whole Numbers and Fractions. Now, we just finished up chapter nine which was all about adding and subtracting whole numbers. And today we're starting chapter 10, which is all about multiplying and dividing whole numbers. So we're starting off this first lesson with how to multiply whole numbers times fractions. And the good news is multiplying and dividing with fractions is actually a lot easier than adding and subtracting with them because you don't have to find common denominators. The hardest part of adding and subtracting with fractions is finding common denominators. And you don't have to do that when you multiply or divide them. Let's take a look. Actually, first, let's write down some steps. When you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you just need to follow these steps. Step one is give the whole number a denominator. of one. Give the whole number a denominator of one. Step two is multiply straight across. That means you multiply your numerator times your numerator and your denominator times your denominator. Remember, when we're adding and subtracting fractions, we don't add or subtract the denominator. We make the denominator the same in both of the add ends or in the minuend and the subtrahend. And then we just add and subtract the numerators and the denominator stays the same. That's not how it is when you're multiplying fractions. You multiply straight across numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And step three, this is the last step, simplify. That's it. So let's jump right in here and do an example together. Let's say we have one third times 12. So we have a fraction here times a whole number. How do we do this? All we have to do is follow these three steps. Step one is give the whole number a denominator of one. So right now we have a fraction times a whole number. We change it to a fraction times a fraction by just giving the whole number a denominator of one. So 12 over 1 just means the same thing as 12. It's just written in a fraction form. Notice when you say this fraction, 12 ones, it even mean, that even sounds like it just means 12. 12 ones, if you have 12 ones, you just have 12. So 12 ones means the same thing as 12, but when you give it a denominator of 1, it just makes it into a fraction form, which makes it so you can multiply it by this fraction. Step two is multiply straight across. So you multiply your numerator times your numerator. One times 12 is 12. And you multiply your denominator times your denominator. Notice it's different than when you're adding and subtracting fractions. Do you add or subtract the denominators? No, they stay the same. But when you're multiplying, you do multiply the denominators. Three times one is three. And step three is simplify. So 12 thirds, you can see that's an improper fraction. 12 is bigger than three. You can't leave a fraction like that with a numerator that's bigger than its denominator. Its head is too big. So we have to, in order to change this into a mixed or whole number, we have to divide the denominator into the numerator. So we go like this. And we know three can fit into 12 four times. Four times three is 12, and 12 minus 12 is zero. So 12 thirds, we change it into the whole number four, and that's our final answer, four. Now you might have noticed we ended up with a product that's less than one of our factors. And that's, a, that's not very usual because normally you are used to multiplying and getting a product that's bigger than both of the factors. Like, you know, two times three means two threes or three twos and you get six. 
6 is bigger than both 2 and 3. But in this case, we got a number that's smaller than one of our factors. And that makes sense because it's 12 one third times. It's 12 less than one time. So it's got so the answer has to be less than 12. If you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you'll always get an answer that's smaller than the whole number you started with because it's 12 less than one time. 12 less than one 12 less than one whole time has to be less than 12. Now, if you don't understand that, you don't need to worry about it because you can still follow these three steps. Let's go ahead and do another one together. One fourth times 20. We have a fraction one fourth times the whole number 20. Step one is give the whole number a denominator of one. So we give 20 a denominator and that denominator is one. <laughs> Step two is multiply straight across. One times 20 is 20. And we multiply the denominators too. Four times one is four. Step three is simplify. This is an improper fraction. So we have to divide the denominator into the numerator. Four can fit into 20. Five times. Five times four is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. And the answer is five. You'll find you get improper fractions a lot when you're multiplying a fraction times a whole number. Let's do another example. Let's do one fifth times seven. So we're multiplying and you can't see the three steps anymore on my screen, but you can still see it on your own page because hopefully you wrote it down. We have one fifth times seven, the fraction one fifth times the whole number seven. Step one is give the whole number a denominator of one. Step two is multiply straight across numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. One times seven is seven. Five times one is five. And seven fifths is an improper fraction. So we need to divide the denominator five into the numerator seven. Five can fit into seven one time. One times five is five. 7 minus 5 is 2. Whatever your remainder is, if there is one, that becomes your numerator. Your divisor is your denominator. So the answer is 1 and 2 fifths. Let's do another example. Let's say we have 2 fifths times 11. We have our fraction 2 fifths times our whole number 11. And the first thing we do is we give the whole number a denominator of one. Step two is multiply straight across. Two times 11 is 22. Five times one is five. We have an improper fraction as our answer, so it needs to be simplified by dividing our denominator into our numerator. Five can fit into 22 four times because five times four is 20. Four times five is 20. 22 minus 20 is two. Whatever your remainder is becomes your numerator. Your divisor is your denominator. Two fifths cannot be simplified because two can't fit into five evenly. And so the only, so the greatest common factor between two and five would be one. And the answer is four and two fifths. Let's do another example. Let's do two thirds times 14. Step one, give the whole number a denominator of one. Step two, multiply straight across. Two times 14 is 28. Three times one is three. Notice again, we have an improper fraction for our answer. So we have to divide the denominator three into the numerator 28. How many times can three fit into 28? Three can fit into 28 eight times because three times eight is 24. I mean, no, <laughs> nine times. Whoops. Three can fit into 28 nine times because three times nine is 27. Nine times three is 27. 28 minus 27 is one. Our remainder one becomes the new numerator and the divisor three is our denominator. So the answer is nine and one third. 
Sorry you guys have to look at my disgusting black nail. I smashed it on a piece of wood. It's been black for a really long time. You've probably noticed it in lots of these lessons by now. No, I'm not painting my nails black. It's a, it's a, um, it's a smashed finger. Okay, nine and one third is the final answer. Now I'm gonna turn my page over and I'm gonna give you your independent work. All you have to do is follow the, the three steps. Give the whole number a denominator of one, multiply straight across, and then simplify. You'll almost always have to simplify by dividing the denominator into the numerator because almost all your answers will be improper fractions. Okay, so do 13, and, oops, it's messed up. Do 13 times 2 thirteenths and do um, 9 times 3 fourths. Go ahead and do those two problems. Notice on these, the whole number is on the left. It doesn't matter if the whole number is on the left or the right side, because remember the commutative property states that you can switch around factors and it doesn't change the product. So whether or not the whole number is over here or over here, you do it the same way. You give the whole number a denominator of one, multiply straight across and then simplify. Go ahead and do these independent um, problems and then click on the video attached under this one to see if you did them correctly. I will see you there.